Artificial intelligence means computers being as smart as humans, or actually smarter than humans. There are extremely high value applications of machine learning that are actually going live and that we use every single day. It's just that some of us are more aware of them than others. We're superhuman now because of AI. I mean, we can do arithmetic, we can play Go. I mean, this sort of is what it is to be human. We've been extending ourselves with technology for thousands of years, at least 10,000 years. AI is here now. It is moving at an uncontrollable pace as we go into the future. And unless we accept and really try to get on board, we're going to find that it outruns us at a considerable way. There's multiple different ways of creating machine learning systems or machine intelligence. Um, one approach is to simulate the human brain. Another way of looking at this is that you build several narrow intelligence systems and try to combine them. And what's happened over the last 10 years is that the, the capability for us to build these systems has just skyrocketed. But really what's changed in the last decade or two decades is first the advent of the commercial web browser and the internet. Um, the fact that now we're starting to create data assets that describe the world's information coupled to research advances that mean that we have increasingly general learning systems and abilities to train these systems really quickly means that it's sort of this perfect storm right now. One of the surprising things about machine learning and, and artificial intelligence is that at, for the first versions to really start the revolution, they don't have to be much better than we are. They just have to be as good as we are. Because as soon as you have a general purpose intelligent machine that can improve itself, it's going to skyrocket. When we create a computer system which is going to be as smart as a human employee, there's going to be a lot of people out of a job. AI is a transformational technology which, uh, where there's going to be winners and losers. That's quite clear. We've already seen this with computers. I mean, the whole computer revolution has replaced so many jobs that we used to do by hand. Of course, having people become unemployed sounds bad, but this will create new kinds of jobs and new kinds of opportunities, just like internet created tons of new opportunities. AI will create new jobs, but these will be very, very high value jobs around data analytics and the like. Um, and there will not be so many jobs created by, uh, by AI as there will be those lost as a result of AI. It could very well take us back to the turn of the 20th century, the late 19th century, where uh, people accepted uh, service jobs. Um, and certainly uh, my grandmother was one of them. In general, I'm not a big fan of regulation at all. I think regulation almost always fails to do what it tries to do. Unfortunately, a lot of technologists are saying that uh, you know, they, they, they put government as an opposition and they think regulation is all bad. Actually, in biology, we talk about both upregulation and downregulation, and technology actually gets a lot of upregulation. The governments realize it's important to the economy. I think governments have a hard time controlling this revolution. This revolution is going to happen going to happen anyway. In fact, there's a, there's a race underway right now because there's tons of companies who want to be the first to create artificial intelligence systems. Innovation is an arms race between companies and creative destruction means that uh, all companies are going to be racing to get ahead of the game. But whether that is a race to the bottom or a race to the top uh, depends to some extent on regulation. And interestingly, uh, in rather infamous incidents is like uh, Sports Direct. That wasn't technology which was causing uh, uh, those conditions in the, in the labor force in Derby. It was actually the opposite. A lot of the tech companies do engage with governments, with, with non-government organizations. There's all kinds of cooperation. But they're also in a huge race, in a competition with the other companies. So it is a bit scary. And I suppose there's not much more we can do than to hope for the best. Hoping for the best would clearly be one way of approaching this. I would rather hope, however, that we could really put in place a framework of accountability that made it very hard for people to negate their responsibilities or otherwise move away from them. And so I think it was incumbent on all companies to really start thinking about the ethical implications of artificial intelligence. It is very hard to make AIs accountable for what they do when they don't necessarily have a personality as one would recognise it in the world today. How an artefact takes 
decisions is determined by two things, the people who manufacture it and the people who own it. We have to really rewrite the rule book because it's going to be very difficult to work out who is responsible for any different part of the jigsaw. The responsibility is therefore just the same as it is for using heavy machinery. So what this means is that even though the AI might be uh, doing the moral decision taking, it isn't the moral agent. The moral agent is the one that we consider to be responsible for the actions. From a legal perspective, the AI rulebook has yet to be written, and that's what really makes it interesting for all of us. But you know, the law is very capable and very flexible when it comes to this, and we have seen very many examples in the past of where law has flexed and been able to provide a framework and provide a solution and answer to the legal and technological problems of the day. Creating a superior intelligence is risky. There's no doubt about that. It is risky. However, it's going to happen. I don't think we can stop this development anymore. And if you look at ourselves as a superior intelligence compared to ants, well, clearly we could kill ants as much as we want. But we don't really want to do that, do we? So when we do have the superior intelligence on our planet, I think it's mostly going to ignore us. Now, there's almost nothing left on the planet in terms of mammals, except for humans and about seven species that we really like. And that's an unintended consequence. One of the things they talk about with superintelligence is even if you can control the goal, can you make sure that there isn't some side consequence? This might be a different spin on it, but, but I, I'm actually more afraid of, uh, or more concerned with not deploying learning systems into um, settings where there's already demonstrated evidence that they can provide significant amounts of value. If you take the, the example of um, screening mammography, so you know in the US there's 30 million women who have to go for regular screening and there's only 35,000 radiologists in America who can undertake these scans and there's very clear evidence that machines can augment the ability of radiologists to do this and do this analysis and so part of the ethical concern I have is that we're, we're actually um, limiting uh, you know, care and limiting the quality of care that we deliver because the institutions through which we have to validate these technologies are too slow moving. There's some people that think that AI is an existential threat and that it's going to turn into an ape magically and, and want to compete with us for resources and know how to, that we would be stupid enough to architect something that would have access to the, to the weapons or something. I, I sort of listen less to the fear mongering and focus more on the practicalities of the research today. I think it's certainly clear that AI is going to shape our future. It's going to certainly shape the next few years and beyond. Whether or not it's the end of humans or is going to shape our own destiny, um, I think that I'll leave that to others to, to, to describe. I mean, if it goes good, we will end up with superior intelligence, which will solve all the problems we have. Problems like poverty or hunger or medicine. And if it goes bad, then we will end up with Terminator 2.